Hi, so welcome back this week to Toothday Scoop with Scow, our second edition. I guess we're doubling the amount of episodes we have out there, so that's pretty exciting. Anyway, today I want to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about new patient exams and why we need to take all the extras that we want to take. There are a lot of hot topics out there right now, like dental implants. We have a whole bunch of stuff here. Some other time, I think we can talk about dental implants. I think it's more important, though, to talk about maybe how not to get these, uh, and then we can talk about, about those as things progress here with my topics. But I did have one request from Crystal about tonsil stones, so let's talk about tonsil stones. Tonsil stones a lot of people aren't familiar with. If you're not familiar with them, you're really lucky because they're not very fun. What tonsil stones are is within our tonsil, the part that you can really see in the back of the throat, there's a lot of folds and they're called crypts actually inside of the tonsil so the tissue really folds in on itself and you can get gunk for lack of a better term back there. Our mouths are full of bacteria. Our bodies love to grow bacteria. They're nice and, and warm and the saliva likes to house stuff like bacteria or yeast. There's mucus in the back of your throat. Uh, it's just who we are and it gets trapped inside of those crypts or folds of the tonsils and as it sits in there it just kind of rots, for lack of a better term, and it gets stinky. And some people will notice, they'll see the little white part of the tonsil and they can actually express the stone sometimes. Sometimes people get a lot of them and they're really a problem, in which case they really perpetuate themselves because they get into the tonsil, they irritate the tonsil, cause it to swell, and that makes that little crypt even bigger. You can get more crud in there which causes it to swell more, which causes you to get more crud in there. So if you're having a chronic problem with tonsil stones, I'd recommend that you see an ENT at your nose and throat specialist. They may talk about doing either maybe a lasering procedure or even removing your tonsils if it's a severe issue. There's no real easy fix for tonsil stones. It may be just the way that you put together if you do get those. So there you go, Crystal, there's tonsil stones. So for today's topic, all these x-rays, this is a series of x-rays I have on my computer screen. It's actually of Michelle, um, our hygienist here. She's kind enough to use hers as an example. Oftentimes I see new people and they really haven't had a full series like this before. Uh, I, I like to be really thorough and a lot of dentists do like to be very thorough. So this full series is, is a bunch of separate x-rays and each one is designed to look at, at different things. So there's four in the middle here. Some people have heard of bite wing x-rays in dental offices, and that's what these are, these four right here. And that's what you'd be accustomed to getting at every checkup. And they're really designed to look for cavities between the teeth. And they look at if you have gum disease or not, I guess it's checking the bone levels between the teeth as well. They can't really show us a whole lot more than that. They it can mean fractured teeth and such. They don't show us the health of the root. They don't show us uh, the way that the bone looks all the way down the root, which is really important. And they don't show us maybe where nerves are located. Like if you need a tooth extracted, Michelle doesn't need any teeth extracted. But if she did, I would certainly want to see what all the root looks like here because I would have to remove all of that. And normally you don't see Michelle's here. She's got a nerve that's hiding down below the teeth. Sometimes you do see a nerve kind of close to these teeth, so it's really important for me to know where that nerve is if I'm either going to do root canal treatment or if I'm going to remove a tooth. If I'm going to place a dental implant, I've got to know where that nerve is. That's for the lower teeth. For the upper teeth, I've got to know where your sinus is. So these x-rays of the roots are going to show me where the floor of your sinus is. I'm kind of tracing it with my arrow right here. Here's Michelle's. Michelle did actually lose a tooth. This one, fairly recently before this x-ray was taken, she had a cracked tooth and there was nothing we could do about that, so we had to take it out. And we knew that her sinus was a fair distance away from that root, so it was safe. Incidentally, she did get a dental implant placed. Um, there it is right there. And we took x-rays along the way. Dental implants are going to be a topic for much later. So again, these are four bite wing x-rays of Michelle's from a different visit, and this is just routine annually. We're going to look between the teeth for cavities. They also don't check the front teeth. Cavities are not as common on the front teeth, so we don't check them every time. So we're going to take this full mouth series the first time we see you, and again, about every five years, maybe sooner if you get a lot of cavities, maybe every 10 years if you really don't have much going on with your teeth. Like Michelle, I probably really don't need another one of these for quite some time. 
Okay, so a question I get about these x-rays is how safe are they? And that's a really good question. There's a lot of good information and maybe some not so good information out there. You can look up anything on the internet that you want. But I'll cite a couple sources and show you um, safe radiation doses that may be a comparison for every day because Dr. Connors and I, of course we want everything to be really safe and we're not going to you know, recommend something unless we really need it or if it's unsafe for you. So just to kind of give you an idea, this is an x-ray sensor that we use here. And you'll see these in different, you know, dental offices and it's on a cord, which means it's completely digital. And in this way, we can reduce the amount of radiation by, geez, compared to what it was 20 years ago. Really big difference, really big drop in radiation. These sensors are kind of big. I'm sorry, they're uncomfortable. They don't feel very good in your mouth. Some people do better than others with us. I mean, they can make you want to gag. Let's just be honest, people don't really like these very much. But this is so important because we can diagnose things earlier if we don't just get these x-rays for you and we put things off. They get a lot more uncomfortable than these little sensors. So that's why we do that. Same thing with colonoscopy. Nobody likes them. We don't do them here. They're not fun, but you need it for your health, right? So radiation with this. I'm going to cite this. This is a fancy little notebook I got from UCLA. I traveled out there last July to learn about CT scans because we have a CT scanner here and I wanted to learn more about it. So I went to Los Angeles, which wasn't for me. I missed Wisconsin a lot when I was there. I got some good information. So this is just a photo and it's a little slide. We're going to upload it onto our Facebook page so that you can see it. Uh, dosage from dental radiography. So when you're just walking around Earth, Earth gives off radiation. So you get radiation all the time, every day. You get a fair amount of it just on a flight. You get a lot of it for medical grade CTs. Um, the CT scanner that we have here, which obviously is a little different than this, it gives 3D images. Anyway, the 3D CT scanner that we have here is a much lower dose of radiation than you get with a medical grade. Our, ours is called a cone beam. Theirs is, is medical grade, so it takes slices. If you're interested in that, you can look it up. But that's why ours is cheaper too, because it's just, um, it's all we need for dental. So it's a little different than your medical grade CT. Um, so with this chart, they just give us a comparison. Your daily background radiation would be like a one. Um, they just say that all the radiation that you get when you're walking around the planet, they just grade it as one on here as a means of comparison. One of these little guys, whether it's a bite wing, people have heard of bite wings. These other ones are called periapical films. They're all the same radiation and they're about 0.5. So we add about another half a day on earth for you when we're taking one of these guys. So when we take a full series, it's about an extra 11 days on the planet of radiation. That's what it is. It's equivalent. If I take a CT scan here in my office, it's about 6 to 12 days, depending on the field of view that I take. It's usually probably going to be around 8, maybe an extra week on the planet of regular radiation. As opposed to, let's say if you go to your uh, doctor and you need a medical grade CT of your abdomen, which is common and safe, that's 706 days. So a couple extra years with those medical grade CTs. So dental films, really much different than medical ones. Well, for one thing, we can do them this way because they're so small and you do need them every year. So we get them as low as possible. So they're really very safe. Okay, one last thing I want to talk about that you might not realize that Dr. Connors and I are looking for when you come in for a new patient exam or any exam is that we're checking you for oral cancer. So we're going to be looking at your tongue, your cheeks, underneath your tongue, making sure that everything looks healthy that way. If you do use tobacco, if you chew tobacco, we're going to look at those areas a little more closely. We're not going to give you a lecture, but we want to make sure that they're looking okay. And no matter how long it's been since your dental visit, we're not going to give you a lecture. We would just be very grateful if you came in and uh, let us take a look and experience our x-rays. I'm they're maybe not as uncomfortable as I said for you, hopefully not. But thanks for your patience when you do come in um, with those x-rays so that you can get them and get a good diagnosis. So thank you very much. We'll see you next week.